Hello YouTube and welcome to Go Girl Gaming's coverage of the game Arc Age. On this channel we'll be covering housing, farming, crafting, auction house use, and trading. This video I'm going to give you an update on my progress so far in the game and where I will be focusing my attention for the next few weeks in the game. So, so far in the game regarding the areas that I cover, I have through a lot of hard work game wise through mining and farming have built my house my farmhouse and my scarecrow farm the scarecrow farm was acquired via the quest chain for farming and trade well not so much farming but the, the trade the intro it's an intro to gardening because that's where you get your 8x8 garden and then the next part in the chain you get your donkey to do trade packs and then the last part you get sent over to so if you're on the west side you get sent over to Osteria if you're on the east side you get sent I believe to two crowns and that is how you get your scarecrow farm 16 by 16 scarecrow farm nice piece of land to be able to farm on it takes one lumber pack to build the scarecrow farm once you acquire it. And by the way, for those who have not done it yet, but would like to, you don't have to make it to the trader in order to get credit. You have to just make it to a certain zone. Yeah. And you'll see it on your map when you do the quest. There's like a, a circle area that you have to make it to in order for the quest to update. And then you will get whether you actually make it or not because sometimes especially depending on if you do it in the peak time people do camp out on the docks in order to harass kill etc yeah there are guards there but they won't necessarily depending on where you show up they won't necessarily the guards won't necessarily get to them before they get to you so just be aware of that all you have to do is make it to that zone. If you can make it, plus there are people, you know, just roaming around out in the oceans. Particularly people that are trying to be pirates and whatnot. So, be aware of that. But if you do indeed make it to the zone, your credit, your your quest will update. And then you can make the decision as to whether or not you want to go all the way. Which I did. And I made it to the resource trader and got initially 14 stabilizers but with the 5% interest because they you don't get your trade I want to say rewards but that's really not the right word you don't get your income I guess from your trade until 22 hours later so you get 5% for interest so I ended up getting 15 charcoal stabilizers for that run which I use to make the opaque polish, which da -da, brings me to where I will be focusing the channel in the weeks to come. As I've stated in previous videos, there are 18 main crafting areas that one can focus on, but there are also three additional skills that could just as easily be considered crafting that you can gain proficiency in as you can see here mining is one of them and again I did a lot of mining in order to be able to build the house and the farmhouse it took 10 stone packs to build the farmhouse and two stone packs to build the regular house so it takes three pieces of stone and you don't always get stone when you mine sometimes you can just get ore so you have to do a lot of mining to get three stone pieces just to make one stone brick. So you need 300 pieces of stone for one stone pack. Multiply that by 10 for the farmhouse and by 2 for the regular house. So a lot of mining there. So no surprise that my mining proficiency is through the roof. Also from when you're just doing the questing, because I did quest all the way up to 50, you get a lot of 
coin purses and to open the coin purses it does cost labor and they credit you so to speak the labor under the larceny what the larceny does is when you reach a certain level in larceny proficiency you can increase the drop rates of rare items such as the the dust and whatnot and the types of dust that you get so the higher the larceny the more likely you are to get say sunlight shards or sunlight crystals as compared to the lower levels and then the last one is fishing and you can do fishing one of two ways you can either focus on like sports fishing which is a fun thing to do I have not explored that I probably will much much later on but I will definitely be doing some fishing because you need to do fishing or you know of course you can always purchase some fish and whatnot off the auction house but or the the there's an essence that you can make that you that you make from fishes it's called I think dawn light essence and you use that to craft certain things so all three are good to have high proficiencies in the other things I will be focusing on initially are alchemy farming logging and gathering I chose logging because I'm going to be leveling it anyway because for just about anything you build in this game you need logs so might as well take advantage of the fact that I'll be leveling it just by default you need you need logs to build boats you need logs to build houses you need logs to build the farm like it took one lumber pack which is a hundred pieces of lumber so 300 logs just to build the large scarecrow farm needed five lumber packs for the farmhouse and one lumber pack for the regular house so already doing a lot of farming I mean of, of logging plus there are other items in the game for example I want to do I want to build a some lauders for aging honey cheese or salve Right now, I'm going to look into the salve, and I'll definitely do a video on that once I get it up. Because I'm curious as to how much you can get for a trade run for the aged cheese, salve, or honey. Also, I want to do a beehive, and not only do you need lumber for the beehive, but you need a certain type of lumber for the beehive. You need a hard aspen wood, which is a rare drop from harvesting aspens. It's pretty convenient for me because I plant a lot of aspen anyway. I just like the tree. I think it's very efficient. So I plant a lot of aspen anyway. So we'll need three of those just to build a beehive and then we'll go from there on how the beehive works and again do a video on that, show you guys how all that works. And then you also get, once you get reach a, a proficiency in logging, you get to be more efficient by being able to put down certain types of wood lots. Currently there are six types of wood lots. There's rubber, maple, aspen, pine, and bamboo. And bamboo I plan on using definitely for a time to come because you need bamboo for traps you need fish traps which I'm going to build and when I do that I'll show you that put them down on one of our aqua farms you also need them for some of these small animal pens I don't know about all of them but you definitely need it for some of them both to build them and to maintenance them if they break you also can make bamboo fishing poles which only lasts three days so if you before and it takes proficiency in order to both create and use the metal fishing poles so you'll be using the bamboo fishing poles for a while so you need bamboo to keep making them so 
hence my desire to increase logging proficiency and to do it in a relatively quick fashion. Also gathering and farming Young because a lot of the things that I do as far as particularly in trade pack runs is related to farming and gathering so plus you need to do farming and gathering in order to support alchemy because alchemy we have found and by we I mean because I have another guild mate that's also leveling alchemy it is very resource intensive basically you have to here I'll just show you real quick for the most part, when leveling up alchemy, alchemy, at least in the beginning, you are going to be putting down mushrooms. So when you see farms full of mushrooms, that's more than likely what people are doing because you need the mushrooms in order to level minor, level alchemy through minor healing and minor mana potions because it's the cheapest one that will give you the medicinal powder. Plus, you can already find, at least on the server that I'm on, and I'm pretty sure it's, it's true for all the servers, you can find mushroom seed bundles already that will help you get this done more quickly because you have to churn out a lot of the powders because if you're leveling alchemy through minor healing like I'm doing right now, and minor mana it takes eight medicinal powders so basically you're going to have to create the medicinal powders using the blue salt knives by about 20 mushrooms it takes about 20 mushrooms to get the enough powder to make the eight powders you'll get actually more than eight powders but still you have to you can only do it 10 at a time as far as the mushrooms go and just doing 10 is not going to give you 8 generally. So you have to do 20 mushrooms. And then even more so for the mana because you need 12. So you'll basically have to do it 3 times to get to 12. Then you start adding in more ingredients. So lavender for the next level. And then iris for the next level of the minor mana potions. And that's where you're going to spend most of your time initially in leveling alchemy. Then there are some items that you can make under pigments, oils, and polishes. For example, I've already made a couple of the opaque polishes, but bear in mind that for all of the pigments, oils, and polishes, you will need a what I'll call a special crafting ingredient. Special meaning that it is not readily available. For example, for the opaque polish, you need the charcoal stabilizers, which Again, I went and got the run, so... And you can buy them off the auction house, too. I've done that as well. But you have to do the either buy them off the auction house or do the overseas, overseas trade run to Austeria if you're on the West Continent, to Two Crowns if you're on the East Continent. And you need three just for one, one polish. In addition to the ingredients that are readily available, you can easily grow the azaleas and the, and the narcissus, so... Then another oil that you'll need is the viscous glossy oil. You'll need the rock salt stabilizer, which you actually have to go over to Loot Song to get if you're on the Western Continent. And two crowns, two crowns if you're on the Eastern Continent. So hang on a second for the opaque polish. Oh, it's two crowns. It's two crowns. So you have to go to Esna. Ooh, I didn't realize that. You have to go to Esna if you're on the east, if you're on the east side to get the charcoal stabilizer. So, congealed oil, I think, may be the most, the, the easiest, but at the same time, the most annoying. You don't have to go overseas, but you have to get a rare drop by basically planting a lot of cotton. <laughs> so, basically, you will spend your time in alchemy as we are doing minor healing and minor mana potions until you can get high enough to make some of the stuff you really want to make. Right now, what I'm working towards is a proficiency to make the vis viscous glossy oil. And as you can see, I have a long ways to go. I'm currently at 333, and I need 10,000. And I really don't want to go to the auction house for this oil. So we'll see how long I can hold out. I have all the mats, all of them. I just need the proficiency. So we'll see how that goes. 
The other thing I'm going to be doing, because again, I am covering all aspects of farming, crafting, auction house trading, blah, blah, blah. So I'm also completing the Blue Salt Brotherhood quest chains for those areas. The one that I more than likely will not complete is the mining one because I think it's a waste of materials. Technically, you could say that about all of these, but there's no way in the world. At one point, you have to give up an opaque polish, and there's no way in the world I feel until maybe much, much, much later on in the game that I would be willing to part with an opaque polish whether I bought it or whether I created it for a quest. Just, no, not going to do it. So that one I more than likely will not do. But the others I'm already starting on with relation to what I am going to be focused on, which is farming and gathering. So for the farming one, I am standing in front of trade guide. I think it's, I think this is the guy that you actually do. Actually, no, it's not because he's not lit, so I take that back. Okay, I'm doing the gathering one, which you actually get a thing in the mail once you do so much gathering. You'll get a letter in the mail, and then you will come over. If you're on the west side, you'll come directly to this chick. If you're, if you're on the east side, you'll go down to Anvilton, and there will be a Blue Salt Brotherhood flower seller there. So I am actually on part two of this quest chain. I've already completed the first part, which was to grow and bring back to her 100 roses and 100 lavender. The lavender kind of hurt a little bit because you also use that for alchemy, but I was growing it anyway, so again it, it to me it wasn't a big deal now i'm on part two and this is where you will actually start getting items that if you choose to use them will increase your proficiencies since I'm, I'm covering this type of thing on the channel i'm actually going to get the complete the the chain and get the items and use them and let you guys know if it seems to make any noticeable difference allegedly you get an increase in proficiency of a hundred when wearing three pieces of the set you get 200 if wearing five pieces of the set so maybe I can start doing the seed bundles sooner by 200 if I get the five piece set before I have the proficiency to make the seed bundles we will see and I'll definitely let you guys know so I'm going to go ahead and turn this one in and see what the next part of the chain is. So I'm going to turn this into her because this is part two of this chain. And then she's going to give me part three, which will give me some shoes. The first part, by the way, just gave me some coin. I didn't get any pieces of what they call armor. And my game just went poof. So we're going to pause and get the game back. Okay, and we're back. So, just got through turning in the quest, the gathering quest, and we got interrupted by an unexpected disconnect. That was not the daily restart, because that has already occurred. So, whatever. So now I'm going to pick up, because I was in the middle of the turn-in, so it gave me credit for that. And now I'm moving on to There's the next part of the quest where I have to grow cornflower and rosemary. rosemary. Then here I'm going over to Farmer from the Blue Salt Brotherhood to turn in the second part of the farming quest. The first part was... Oh, jeez. What was the first part? <laughs> oh, I don't... Was, oh, I remember. It was barley and tomatoes. I had to grow 100 barley and 100 tomatoes, so we did that. This is part two, where I had to grow, I believe, 50 garlic and either 50 or 100 rice. Let me check and see how much. I think I have over 100 rice. Yeah, so it was 50 garlic and 100 rice. And I will get the farmer's gloves for that same effect when I'm farming once I get three pieces of the set my farming proficiency goes up by 100 the whole set which is five pieces 
and it will go up by 200. So I'm turning this in to get part three of this quest chain. And now, similar to the gathering one, the next thing that I can acquire are shoes. Strawberries can be a valuable and to do that, crop. I need to plant Grow some, and visit some a strawberries and station. some corn. So that will be the next part in the series. So that is what I will be up to for the next several weeks is doing the farming and gathering quest chains, leveling alchemy, getting my farmer's workstation up and running, getting a larder up and running so that I can see what you get trade pack wise for that and just seeing how it, how it, how it works I, I'm, I didn't get to do it in alpha so definitely want to see how all of that works now that we are in go live and sharing all of that with you guys that's going to be it for this video of where I am progress wise and what I'll be covering for the next several weeks. Please like and subscribe. Feel free to tell a friend that's interested in Arc Age. And we'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.